What's up everyone? Today we're back with more Pico CTF solutions, specifically within the reverse engineering category. Today we'll solve the unpack me challenge. The description reads, can you get the flag? Reverse engineer this binary. So right click, copy, go to our terminal window, make dir unpack me, cd into that, and download it with wget ls type l unpack me upx and we see the size of the file let me run the file command on it see what we're working with this reads the headers and prints out what kind of file it is and it says this is an elf 64-bit executable statically linked with no section header okay so less output than what we're normal to seeing um, from like binaries like this. Let me chmod it, make it executable. What's your favorite number? Uh, 101. Sorry, that's not it. Okay, can I do S trace? So it's printing out a prompt, right? What's your favorite number? Then it's hanging. And then, so I know at some point it does some type of comparison with what I entered and what the actual number is. Sometimes that's in the form of a string compare. So actually let's do ltrace, um, string compare is a C library function, man stir compare. Oh, no manual entry, that's weird. Let me open it up here. Um, Google's. So string compare, it takes two strings, compares it. If they're equal, it returns zero. If not, it returns a non-zero number. So I'm thinking maybe this code has string compare called in it, and I can check that with ltrace. Couldn't find dot dyn sim r this. Okay, interesting. But it still asks us, what's your favorite number? Sorry, that's not it. Okay, if ltrace doesn't work, Let's try strace to look at the system calls. Whenever you run strace, you're going to see this giant mountain of text. All that's really doing is setting up the virtual, uh, not the virtual environment, the process's virtual memory address space. So you can safely ignore it. It has nothing to do with what we're concerned with. It's just setting up the process's virtual memory our virtual address space. So we see write what's your favorite number and then a read write writes the file descriptor one that's standard output and then read is reading from file descriptor zero which is standard input. So let's say uh, zero or I don't know 100. Sorry that's not it and then it exits. Okay so looking at this file again, unpack me, and it has upx. Now upx is actually a command. It's short for the ultimate packer for executables. You can use it to compress or expand executable files. Uh, the little synopsis here reads, upx is a portable, extendable, high performance executable packer for several different executable formats. It achieves an excellent, an excellent compression ratio and offers very fast compression. Your executables suffer no memory overhead or other drawbacks for most of the formats supported because of its in-place decompression. Okay, and we can scroll down and get this more a disclaimer, a description. Um, cool. And then we see the commands, compress, decompress, test, and list. But before we get into the actual commands, why would I want to pack a file? Like why why is this challenge called unpack me? Why is it packed to begin with? I like this definition from Kaspersky, uh, Kaspersky's encyclopedia. Packers are used to compress files. When something is compressed, it's made smaller. Um, this, for example, to save on disk space or reduce data transmission time. But Packers are also used by cyber criminals as a form of code obfuscation. 
the packing forms an extra layer of code that's wrapped around a piece of malware to conceal it. This is done to make it harder for anti-malware researchers to reverse engineer the code or hinder analysis of the code using heuristics. So essentially, um, anti-malware or antivirus products, they look for certain strings in code, they look for certain patterns, and if you pack it, that's one way to jumble it up and kind of confuse it so you can fly under the radar and it won't detect you. So that's what packing is. So this file is currently packed with UPX. If we want to unpack it or decompress it, we can use the tech D switch. So quit out of that. UPX tech D and then unpack me. Hit enter. And we see the file size has changed. It used to be 37, 379,000 bytes, and now it's like a million bytes. So it's bigger. L is like L. Now when I run a file, I get more information. We get the SHA-1 hash, not really relevant, and we see that it's not stripped, meaning that it still contains the debugging information. Just out of curiosity, let me strings this file. Okay, nothing immediately good. Let's run strace again. And you see there's a lot less output. Let's say 99. Nope. What about when I do ltrace? Nothing. Okay. Let's open this up in GDB. Attack Q for quiet mode. And unpack me EPX. Disassemble the main function. And we get the assembly printed out all nicely. So whenever I see this big wall of assembly, the first thing I look for are all the call commands. Because these are the actual function calls. So here on line 101, we see a call to printf. That's probably printing out the enter your favorite number prompt. Here we see a call to scanf. Uh, scanf, it reads in a number, or it reads in user input. In this case, it reads in our number. And then we see a compare instruction. So scanf will save our value in EAX and then it will compare it with this. And if they're not equal, it'll jump to main 207. Line 207 is down here. It loads up some stuff and then it calls print screen and then it exits. Okay, let me set a breakpoint on this compare break star and then I'm going to say main plus 133 enter run what's my favorite number let's say 12 we hit our breakpoint type disassemble and now we get an ASCII arrow pointing to the current line we're on so the value EAX which is our value is being compared with this. So let's print out EAX. Does this work? We get 12, right? That's the number we entered. And it's being compared to this. Let's print that out. And that's the number. So 754,635. That's the number it's looking for. How do I change the value of EAX? Let me see this. Help R. Help IR is it just EAX equals I haven't used GDB in a little while. I don't remember how to change registers. Let's mm. set EAX. There we go. Okay, so I, I, just for uh, test purposes, I changed the value of EAX to be that. So now when I hit C to continue running the program, it will print out our flag because I changed the two values to equal one another. Alternatively, you can copy this, 
put out, run it normally, and then paste in the number. And we get the flag the same way. All right, so that's how I solved it. Uh, once again, this file was originally packed. It was smaller because it was compressed. Think of like a zip file. When you zip up a file, it becomes much smaller. We undid that, we decompressed it, became much bigger, so now we can actually debug it. If we run file again, we see that it has the not stripped uh, sentence in there. That means it has all the debug debugging information and symbols that we need for GDB to have fun and decompile and disassemble it. That's it for this video, guys. Let me know if you solved this a different way in the comments below. Take it easy and see you next time.